So happy you're spinning part the weekend with us. Take a look at the Razorback starting lineup, and we highlight right at the top of the order, Reagan Johnson, because she had a three-hit game yesterday. Yeah, she is just strong. Her sophomore campaign was outstanding as a freshman. How about second in the SEC in hits at 48? Second only behind Florida's Kendra Falby. Yeah, she's just fun to watch. Very dynamic athlete, can do a lot of different things. Batting average comes in right at the 400 mark. Madison oh. Kerpix, Sewanee, Georgia native, in her senior year. Falling behind 2 0 to start the game. She levels it at two balls and two strikes. <laughs> Little tap. May have hit the bat twice, but it rolls out to the circle. Kerpix grabs it and throws her out. It'll be interesting to see if Georgia wants to take a look at this because it did look like it hit the bat twice, as you mentioned, Mark. A late throw, I should say, to first, but I, I, let's look at this again here. Oh, yeah, it does. goes off the end of the bat. You can see it. And here we are, one batter into the game, and we're going to have our first umpire powwow. Lyndon Baptiste is the plate umpire. Ronald Burkhardt, the crew chief. William Lopez as well. And you can see it right there. And that second hit off the tip of the bat actually slows it down a little bit. It looked like it was going to be going to pitcher Kerr picks, but goes off the bat. Wow, they're going to say that it did. Now, had it hit a, the bat a second time, that would have been a dead ball, correct? Correct. It should have been a dead ball. So I wonder if Tony Bodwin tries to challenge this or if this potentially is not challengeable. You know, it, we watch it here in slow-mo. This might be the better view. Yeah, I, I mean. All right, we're going to play on. And that will be a base hit for Reagan Johnson, her fourth of the series to start the game. <laughs> she is that prototypical leadoff hitter. Just so good at getting on base, stirring the pot. 11 stolen bases on the year. From Reagan Johnson to Reagan Kramer. And Topeka, Kansas native. Strike on the outside corner. Well, yesterday's game began with Reagan Johnson and Kramer reaching base for Brie Ellis. And Ellis promptly hit the three-run home run that set the tone for the game. Two balls, two strikes. Reagan Johnson also began the game with a base hit yesterday. Kramer walked in the first inning yesterday. She goes around. It's strike three nonetheless. So it will not start exactly the same way as yesterday did. There's the first out. Well, this is a big strikeout for Kerpix going to that off-speed pitch and using it early. Yesterday, they did not use it early in that first inning, and Bree Ellis bashed the ball out of the park. Kerpix is going to be mid to high 60s. She's got really good spin on a screwball rise ball. It's that great changeup that sets everything up, though. Ellis just kind of guides that out in front of it, but drops it into left field for a base in. And I guess if you're Georgia, you're like, you know, we'll take that over what happened in the first <laughs> inning yesterday. And, you know, Brie Ellis typically does not swing at the first pitch. This is a changeup, something on the outer half, and she's just going to be a little bit out in front of it, but gets enough barrel on it to put it out in the left field. So when we talked with her after the game yesterday, she said, hey, I, there was a certain pitch I was looking for, the first pitch in the first inning, and I got it, and I hit it out. I wonder if she was looking for a certain pitch there and was out in front of it. Change up, absolutely. You know as a big hitter, when you bash the ball out of the park, there's a good chance you're going to get a healthy share of change up. So sometimes you just sit on it. Lena Pitter, Kennedy Miller. It's upstairs from Kerpix. 
Well, Mark, you already can tell that Arkansas is being disciplined again. They are not really chasing pitches out of the zone. They forced Georgia to throw 140 pitches in yesterday's game. It's out to center field. Sidney Chambly, sunglasses on out in right center, makes the catch for the second out. You know, normally, number of pitches in a game doesn't draw your attention on a box score, but it did yesterday, as you mentioned, over 140 pitches for Georgia hurlers, and I think Leinstock, I want to say, was around 110, 113 around there for the game. Yeah. Big One, difference. 112, right in the 112, middle. 112, right in the go. middle? <laughs> okay. I knew I was in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, she was outstanding. A couple of runners on with two outs for Hannah Gamble. Well, and, and back to the point about Arkansas being patient, working deep into counts, forcing that high pitch count. They had 14 three ball counts in yesterday's game. Which can certainly lead to a high pitch count. Absolutely. And, you know, they know what they're hunting. They're being patient. They're being consistent. They're not getting frustrated and chasing pitches out of the zone. And they're getting in leverage counts, like right now, a 2 0 count. Really good 2-0 pitch as Kerpich paints that inside edge. Trying to go right back in that vicinity and missed a little bit inside. Gamble's favor. What does she get? 3 1 from Madison Kerpix. That's the change up, which Kerpix will throw in any count. Well, we saw quite a few of those three ball counts yesterday. 14 of them were in one here. Belted deep, but foul. A nice 3 1 pitch by Kerpix, not really giving Gamble a whole lot to be able to handle. 3 2. That is not an instant replay. <laughs> Another screwball in the inner half, and as long as Kerpix can keep it on that inside corner running into the hands of Hannah Gamble. She's going to be safe. That ball is more than likely going to be pulled foul. On the eighth pitch of the at bat, she hits a fly ball to the left. Jaden Goodwin kind of battling the sun, able to hang on to that. Great athletes on this Arkansas team. Wendy Ray Davis, who normally is the starting catcher, DPing today. Coach Tony Baldwin saying, hey, we just got to get her off her feet from behind the plate some. So Marissa Miller is in the starting lineup for the third time. Puma in that cleanup spot. And she normally takes care of business for this Georgia offense. It's hitting 315 as a team, 57 home runs as a team on the year. Yeah, this is a team with a lot of explosive offense. 114 of their hits are for extra base hits. That's a clip coming in at 42%. Yesterday, they did not have any extra base hits. That's one of the things I'm sure they're going to try to change here. Yeah, it was a highly uh, unusual game, as we mentioned up top. And we talked with Tony Baldwin about that uh, about an hour ago, and, and his point was, you know, there were several balls we were just an eyelash off of that probably would have changed the outcome of the game, especially in the, in the sixth and seventh inning. Yeah, 100%. I mean, they were just missing, and they'd have been one click earlier. Uh, instead of a pop-up shortstop, could have been a double on the gap. But, you know, he also was very um, respectful of Arkansas. He said, hey, hats off, you know, to them. Slice to left, but there is Reagan Kramer to make the catch for the first out. Yeah, Tony was very complimentary of the game that his counterpart called. Uh, the head coach yeah. of the Razorbacks, Courtney Dively, said, hey, man, she did this for a while, and then she changed it off, did yeah. this and that. And it was a good chess match between the two head coaches. Well, and that's one thing we talk about, how many, how much great pitching there is in this conference. But there's great pitch calling in this conference yeah. that these hitters also have to deal with. 
Ball one inside to Sarah Mosley. Sarah, the team leader with 45 RBIs. No hitless in yesterday's game with a couple of Ks and gets off the snide here with a base hit to center field, the first of the series. Sarah Mosley, one of the best in the business at hitting that ball right back where it comes from, and that ball coming through the middle or the heart of the plate from that left side of Kamenzen, and she's going to drive it right back up the middle. Good she got that there. right off the end of the bat, didn't mm -hmm. she? Base runner for Jada Kearney. Jada's from New Jersey, your home state. That's right. We happened to run into Jada's dad about 45 minutes ago. And <laughs> We were catching an elevator to come up to the press level here, and her dad said to Michelle, hey, you know my daughter is a big fan of yours. You're both from the Garden State. That's right. I'm a big fan of hers. Love the way she represents. The gentleman who made those comments, her dad Jay, by the way, played football at West Virginia and then in the NFL for the Steelers and the Packers. One on, one out for the dogs here in the bottom of the first, just getting underway on this Easter Sunday at Athens. It's a great take. Send that pitch away, slightly elevated in the zone. It's easy to chase that. Easy to chase a pitch out of the zone, especially if you're hunting outside. Kearney, one of the best in the business at staying inside the ball, just like that. All right on cue. Had two hits yesterday. Comes out with an opposite field base hit today. It's two on with one out. Kearney's swing is just so pretty, the way that she's gonna take this pitch. It's slightly inside, so from the left side, pitcher, it's coming into her hands, but she stays inside the ball, hits the lower inner half of that ball. And Tony Baldwin said that's exactly what our goal is. Nobody better in the game than Jada Kearney at doing that. Brings up Sydney Kuma. Well, not that the other hitters for Georgia were impatient yesterday, but certainly Kuma was the most patient. She walked three times in the game yesterday. Foul ball. So that's what they usually average as a team. Now, granted, we're taking one game as a sample size on the other side. That's yesterday. So. They're picking a little bit here, but it gives you an idea. It was kind of an off day for Tony Baldwin's offense. And they still almost won the game. That could be a pair. And safe at first. We do get the middle runner, Kearney, at second on a force out. Kuma beating the relay, so runners are at the corners with two down. Yeah, that's, that's an important play for Kuma to really hustle down that baseline, not sulk that she got jammed up a little bit. Otherwise, if she's double that, the, the inning's over. But instead, it's a first and third situation. So good job by Sydney Kuma to get down the line. And it gives Jaden Goodwin the two out chance. Now in her sophomore season, Kentucky native. That's seven home runs in her freshman year. Hot shot off the foot of Kamenzen into right field, scoring Mosley. Kuma to third. And Arkansas will need to make sure that their pitcher is okay. They're already a little short health-wise in the pitching department. This ball is going to get hit right back at her. It's a curveball in the outer half, and you would think that with Goodwin being a lefty, you really want to run that out. But she gets around that ball, drives it right back up the middle off of Kamenzen's leg, plates a run for Georgia, and another first and third situation here with two outs. 
I don't think she even looked into the dugout. Maybe didn't look back. So she's fine. She's ready to continue and throws a first pitch strike to Ellie Armistead. Sure, Tony Baldwin liking what he's seeing so far here in this first inning. The situational hitting coming through in the first inning when it really did not yesterday. Baldwin there in the third base's coaching box. No two count. And Ellie Armistead and sends that to left field coming in. Reagan Kramer reaches up to make the catch. So the dogs settle for one at Strand. So we see Kerpix for the first time in the series today. Yeah, talking with both teams, and especially on the Arkansas side, talking about, as they described, the tunnels that the Georgia pitchers are throwing in. The location of certain pitches. And that hits the elbow guard of Kylie Halverson. So it's a leadoff hit by pitch in the Arkansas second. And so, Mark, to expand a little bit more on, on the tunnels, basically what pitching coaches, uh, hitting coaches are talking about is a pitcher that can blend the pitches. So, so out of the hand, let's say a screwball, rise ball, they come out of the hand looking exactly the same until about 10, 15 feet before home plate. And then you start to see the pitch inside the curveball running into the right-hander's hands or the rise ball starting to move up through the zone. So that's where as a hitter you have to differentiate. And pitchers that can really blend those pitches together so it's hard to differentiate them can be very successful. Bunted by Carter, that's a fair ball, close but out at first. So she does sacrifice Alverson down to second. That ball was maybe a foot in front of the plate. She did that one well, maybe a little too well, but she does advance the runner. So this is what Arkansas is going to be going up against. You can see Kerpix, it's a lot of screwball, rise ball in the upper half of the zone, and especially that red outside of the zone. That's where she gets a lot of chase. And so far, Arkansas has been pretty disciplined at swinging pitches in the zone, not really chasing out of the zone, but that's when Maddie Kerpix is her best, when she can get those hitters to chase up. Marlon Hedgecock gets hit by the pitch. A second hit by pitch here in the second inning. Available on ESPN Deportes and ESPN Radio. Cardinals won an extra innings yesterday, but the Dodgers have taken two of the first three in that series. Lauren Cammons in, batting in the ninth spot. Hey, let me button up our conversation about the tunnels and let me flip it to the hitting side because we hear about hitters hunting certain pitches. So you were mentioning the rise ball curve tunnel. So a hitter may come up there looking for, say, a rise in that tunnel, might get a curve. Correct. Yeah. So in the most elite pitchers, really what the only way that you can differentiate is if you can really learn to read that spin, right? And the ball's always going to move in the direction of the spin. And Identifying that right out of the hand is takes a lot of experience, takes a lot of reps. And I would never offend a hitter because they never like it when you say they're guessing. They're, they're hunting. There's a particular <laughs> pitch, and it's semantics, I know, but they're hunting certain pitches. They're not guessing. Absolutely. <laughs> it's leverage, right? It's a numbers yeah. game, baseball and softball. Off speed on 3 1. Perfect. Take it to a full count. Well, and you can tell Arkansas is really challenging Kerpix on that inner half. But look at where her toes are. Lauren Cameron's and her toes are on that chalk line. They know she throws a screwball. She's got no room to really work on the inner half. And there's the rise ball. They're laying off anything. Excuse me, that's a changeup. But she's, again, up in the zone. So they're, they're really splitting the zone and thinking belt down. And they're challenging her on that inner half. But now the pitching coach coming out to talk to Kerpix and Give her some direction. She got the top of the order up. Base is loaded. One out. 
Reagan Johnson, an infield hitter first time, her fourth hit already of the series. She's one for two with an RBI with the bases loaded this year. She hasn't been in this situation too terribly often. To begin the game, her average has gone from 400 to 405. Loaded up for the top of the order. Couple of moans from the crowd on that pitch, the outer half. Teflin looked outside. Mm -hmm. well, that's that screwball. It looks like it's starting on the plate and runs away. Chop towards short, gathered, flipped a second out. Good play by Armistead just to get it out. It does bring in Halverson from third base to tie the game, but with as far in as Armistead was playing, she had to quickly get to her left to corral that. Yeah, that's a situation where you have a lot of speed in the hitter with Reagan Johnson, and she's just trying to put it on the dirt. She does that. Armistead knows she's not going to have the opportunity going up the middle to have to play at home, so she's just trying to pick up an out, which she does. First and third situation now. Johnson does get credit for her seventh RBI of the year, now first and third. With two away for Reagan Kramer. Strikeout in her first at bat today against Kerpix. And the base hit to left field gives the Razorbacks the lead. Quickly played in by Jaden Goodwin. With Kramer, an RBI single, plates Hedgecock, and it's 2-1 to one Arkansas. That is just a great piece of hitting, and that is a huge situation that George is trying to get out, a first and third situation with two outs. Pitch on the outer half. Love the way that Kramer's just going to wait on that. She's going to go and get it, send it the opposite way. A little bit of off speed on that pitch and just punches it over Armstead's head. And now they have to deal with uh, yeah. <laughs> pretty else. If you're Georgia, you're like, this is not the way we wanted this inning to go right here. And But you have a chance to limit it to two runs if you can get Ellis, which is a tall task, to have a base hit in the first inning. And of course, a three-run homer in the first inning of yesterday's game that was the difference in it. Foul. Hitting. Understanding the situation. It's tied up there. So she broke a tendency is what she did in the, yes, right. in the first inning yesterday, swinging at the first pitch. Well, and it makes sense. As a hitter, sometimes you have to make a decision when you go up. And when a pitcher has just walked the hitter prior to you, you know they want to get ahead. Every pitcher wants to get ahead. And so if they throw it into your cookie zone, you got to go get it. Well, after Georgia scored a run in the bottom of the first inning, Razorbacks have responded with two of their own and threatening with two on, two outs. With their homer and RBI leader at the plate in Ellis. It's going to kick away from Miller and advance each runner 60 feet. It's interesting they're bringing Bree Ellis back. It looks like she thought she got hit. Back toe. I thought it hit the dirt, but you know what? If I'm an Arkansas fan, I'm like, hey, that didn't hit you, Bree. We got, right. we got the runners for second and third now. Go, go hit it again. Exactly. Get back in there. Oh man, they ripped one right over by our third base camera. <laughs> These things are kind of expensive, Bree. We would really be appreciative if you don't break one. They're right over in there. Everything okay? <laughs> Give me a thumbs up. baby. <laughs> All right. Happy Easter. Thumbs up. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming here to Bree Ellis. That was about as high as the light tower. Yeah. Bree is elite at getting that barrel to anything at her belt or above. So you have to be very careful.
This is an interesting battle going on right here. Very interesting. 57 mile an hour off speed. Kirk's off speed right now is just a little fast. If she can drop that down to about 53 miles an hour, better opportunity to miss the barrel. Get the timing. Hit her out on that front foot. And on the 10th pitch of the at bat, a little floater caught by the shortstop Armistead near the foul. At a time when for a, over a decade, I think it was 11 years, it was either Alabama or Florida that had won either the regular season uh, in the SEC. So for Arkansas to come in and do that, it, really incredible. Big turnaround. Especially during that time period when, like you said, it was basically Alabama and Florida winning all the regular season titles. If you had said during that span, hey, the team that's going to end that span is Arkansas, they would have looked at you like you had a hole in your head. Exactly. I mean, yeah. the team that's last that won one conference game last year is going to be the team to end that, and they were. Yeah. Well, now she's got some of her former players back on her staff. Hey, it's Danielle. Danielle Gibson Wharton. She was an assistant coach last year for Georgia. Now she returns this year to back to Arkansas. That was ball four. So a leadoff walk to Marissa Miller, who's making just her 12th appearance, third start of the season at catcher for the Bulldogs. So a free pass begins the inning, and it was really free passes in the top of the inning that opened up the door for Arkansas with a couple of hit by pitches. Yeah, that, uh, it's almost like the, the softball gods know when you put those free passes on. Around the score. Digby lays down the bunt. Cammons in fires a strike for Ellis at first. A sacrifice for Digby. Great job by the freshman in an absolute sacrifice situation. Nine spot in the order is up. It's Sidney Chambly, the center fielder. Batting in the nine hole. Gonna hit one foul down the left field side. Dallas Goodnight had been in that nine hole. She uh, has a leg injury. They hope to perhaps have her back tomorrow. But Chamley's been playing in center field and Goodnight's absent. And also brings a different type of bat to that nine hole with Chamley's six home runs this year. Sneaky power. Can be very streaky hitter when she's on. front of that off speed. Chambly's from Dallas. Dallas, Georgia. There is one in Georgia. She's not from the Lone Star State. Do not make that mistake. Gotta be careful what you put in your Google Maps. <laughs> Popped up, shallow left center field, and collision. Kramer and Cammons in. Cammons in the shortstop makes the catch and hangs on. That was in no man's land. He had the center fielder Reagan Johnson coming in as well. Really, you normally would see a, an outfielder call off the shortstop there, but Lauren Cammons in stayed with it. Yeah, Lauren Cammons in knowing that her outfielders are going to be playing deep, have a long way to come in. And she gets an out for her twin sister in the circle. First pitch strike, top of the order, Lindy Ray Davis. Fly to left field back in the first inning. Pitch the tying run at second with two outs here in the bottom of the second. Miller began the inning with a walk, was bunted to second. Davis trying to drive her home with two outs. Working that curveball in the outer half. I have to say, Hannah Kamenzen has done a really good job of 
picking up a couple of miles an hour this year. Last year as a freshman, she was more low 60s. She's legitimately mid 60s, 66, 65 miles an hour at that curveball way. And we'll float in a, a good change up in the mid to high 50s at times, just taking a little bit off of it. Cammons and Twins are from the, Nomaha, the Omaha area, Valley, Nebraska, which is on the northwest side of the Omaha metro area. You know, you think about Arkansas matching up their pitching staff against Georgia with all the power. We talk about the home runs, the 57 home runs, the 42% extra base hits. This is a staff that's done a really good job of limiting the deep ball. Keep the ball in the park, and you know that's a big part of limiting crooked numbers or big innings. And the Cannons ends, you know, a big part of the success over the last couple of years that Courtney Dyfel and Arkansas had young players coming in and making an impact right away. Ball four to Davis, second walk of the inning. Two on and two outs. And by the way, don't try to tell the Cammons and Twins apart, because when you and I walked in yesterday before game one, they were both standing together right at the entrance to the field. And they both said hello to us. And I started to, to guess, and I'm, you know, that's not a good idea. Yeah. So I hey, Cammons and Twins, how you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, even Coach Stifel, when she, when she mentioned, she's like, oh, good. Uh, Hannah's wearing her hair in a bun. Yeah, yeah. She's like, I can tell them apart. <laughs> Yeah, I can see the resemblance. Yeah. <laughs> and now Sister Hannah is trying to get out of a bit of a two-on-two-out jam here in a one-run game. But it is interesting that Lauren is all righty and that Hannah is all lefty. Yeah. So. Rosley at the plate, a base hit, and a run scored in the first. And has the count way in her favor now at 3-0. and oh. Be careful if you came and in 10 homers for Mosley this year. Oh, 3-0. She got the green light. You know, I asked you that twice yesterday, and I didn't want to. Yeah, I was waiting for you to answer me. And in this situation, I would have said no, only because a walk in this situation loads the bases for Kearney. Shot to right field, over the head of Nia Carter, and it could give the Dogs the lead. Miller ties it. They do stop the potential go-ahead run. Davis at third. Mosley's second hit of the game makes it two all. Now, this is just what makes Georgia so hard to pitch to and get out throughout the series. The more they see, the more successful they get because they do such a good job of hitting the inside aspect of the ball. and. Sarah Mosley and Jada Kerner are the best. This is an inside pitch, and she's going to open up that front foot and still take it the other way. This is called hitting to the oppo G, and this is what Tony Baldwin is very pronounced at teaching here at Georgia. He wants to make sure that barrel's hitting the lower inside aspect of the ball, so that barrel and that ball meet up, and the ball just jumps off. That oppo G is a big part of this game for them. Coach Baldwin using a timeout to talk with Jada Kearney before this at bat. And by the way, for Mosley, I mean, off the bat, it looked like, hey, this could give them the lead. But one thing I forgot is that you basically had two catchers on the bases running for yeah. Georgia at that yeah. time. Not their fastest players on no. the field. Yeah, if they had some of their speed out yeah. there, definitely would have played it two runs. Here's Kearney, a base hit to right, her first time up. Two hits yesterday for Jada. So already three hits for her in this series. Takes the high strike, steps out. Of course, we have the pitch clock here in the SEC. It has started. She's got to be back in before 10. She fulfills that requirement.
You look at slugging percentage. Kearney leads Georgia in slugging, over 800 slugging, 806. So much power. Whoops, in the right field. That scores Davis. Kearney's second hit, or 32nd RBI, and the Dogs have come back and taken a 3-2 lead. Well, right now you can tell that Georgia's made some adjustments. They're not over swinging. Almost looked like yesterday they were trying too hard to get that timely hit. Here they're handling soft and hard efficiently. This is a change up on the outer half. And she's just going to sit and drive it opposite. And that is so hard to do. A lot of hitters cannot hit that change up the opposite way because they're still early. They're out on the front side. And that ball is just blistered. Ball on to the cleanup hitter, Sidney Kuma. We're not even two innings into this game. It already has a much different feel than yesterday's game. Absolutely. You can just tell that all the hitters are hunting slightly different pitches. And, and you know, Georgia's not a big move up or move back in the box type of team, but they will move off the plate a little bit and look for certain pitchers, especially the lefty coming inside to them. That was an interesting conversation with Coach Baldwin we had earlier today. His basic philosophy is if you're going to move up in the box, then you have to really practice that. You just can't say, oh, Correct. game to game, all right, move up in the box now if you haven't practiced swinging from that. And the points that he made to us all seem to be well thought out and well taken. Yeah, but, you know, when you're moving up in the box, you're creating other zones for the pitcher to throw to. So they've, if they have other weapons, they will attack you a different way. But you can see the difference already. Three for six in today's game, 0 for 8 in yesterday's game with runners in scoring positions. They're just fulfilling those game plan obligations a little bit better today on the Georgia side. It's the third walk of the inning. It's going to bring Courtney Dyke. A lot more down and hard on the hands. Good win. Hard shot. One hopper behind the bag. Ellis takes it to the base. But joining the conference next year. All right, we've had a little back and forth. A little yin and yang going on on this Easter Sunday. 3-2 Georgia. Razorbacks bat in the third. So far, the, the lesson of the game is that you know, the free passes hurt for the five runs on the board for both teams have gotten on base via the free pass. A couple of hit batters, a couple of walks, and have come around to score. Arkansas freshman Kennedy Miller flying to center in her first at bat. He's one for three in the opener of the series yesterday. Four, five, and six hitters up here at the top of the third for the Razorbacks. from the Austin area, north side of town in Georgetown, Texas. He's a member of a state runner-up team, Georgetown High School. 5A level back in 2022. So he becomes strikeout victim number two of the game for Madison Kerpix. Kerpix starting to throw a little bit more to that outer half of the plate. When you really scout Kerpix, you think rise ball, screw ball to righties. And this is an off-speed pitch with a little spin. She takes a little off. It's almost like an off-speed curve ball goes to the outer half. And she actually got two swing and miss in that at bat on Kennedy Miller with that pitch. Let's see if she starts to change her game plan around a little bit. There it is again. That's a foul ball. Strike one on Gamble. Kerpix has thrown a pretty high volume of pitches through the first couple of innings. He was at 50 through the first two. It's going to 
It's almost like Arkansas's game plan. It was usually one about 66 to 70% strikes. So she's obviously more in that 55% range. See if this stays in play. Oh, it's going to tail out. Gamble reached base a couple of times yesterday. One was a hit by pitch, the other a walk. Fly to left her first time today. is up high and it runs to a full count on Hannah Gamble. Ball was undressed, but it was hit foul. <laughs> we should start <laughs> start tallying the uh, the foul balls that Arkansas is hitting down that left field line. They very righty heavy lineup. Went down after it and hits a cue ball on the ground to Kuma at second who makes a long underhand shovel to get Gamble with a second out. Perfect's really going to that off speed pitch. You can tell that Arkansas is having a hard time identifying that. So Kerpik's flirting with her first three up, three down inning of the game. And distinctly different than last inning that had the two hit batters, the walk, and really just the one single. But played in two runs for Arkansas, and, you know, just doing a better job of controlling the strike zone, getting Arkansas to swing at that off-speed pitch. Alverson hit by pitch, one of those pitches in the second. Quickly in the hole, 0 and 2. And let off their second inning that hit by pitch of Halverson. And she would later score one of the two runs, which at that point gave the Razorbacks a 2 1 lead, but Georgia took it back with two in the bottom half. Ball away for a setup, but she's been using in this particular at bat against Halverson more of the rise ball instead of the screw ball. Right off the end of the mm. bat. Coming at 55 miles an hour. That's when you can tell when it goes off the end of the bat like that, that the hitter is just not identifying that that's a slower pitch. And sometimes if you can dump that down, you know, wear the dirt, use the dirt with it, get it down in the low 50s, sometimes can be more effective. I have to say, I've been impressed with Arkansas not really biting at Kerpik's rise ball at all. And it's a non-competitive pitch right now. So just take that pitch out of the arsenal from her right now until she can throw it for a strike. Well, she's almost using it as a setup for that off-speed pitch. So see him something hard in and then go soft away. You know, it's trying to create those. And, and both coaching staffs talked a lot about, you know, EV tunnels, you know, effective velocity tunnels. Something hard in makes something slow and low away look that much more slower. And the, the complete opposite. Change that eye level a little bit with that pitch up. 100%. Change the eye level, and it, it changes the velocity, like the per perceived velocity of what it's coming in at. Looks much faster, hard up and in. Twisting back towards the crowd and into the seats. Love the old school Braves cap. And the ice cream, obviously, is a big hit. Now 
Halverson continuing to battle here to attempt to extend this top of the third inning. Tenth pitch to the bat will be coming here. It's, it's boosted Kerpik's pitch total in this inning. 22. Yeah, she potentially could still get a three up, three down inning, but. Hooking foul into the bullpen. Three pitches on the inning. I mean, that's a lot of pitches <laughs> still to potentially have a three up, three down. Kerpix threw 22 pitches in the first inning, faced five hitters, threw 28, facing seven hitters in the second. And now she's what, 24 Four. pitches. 24. She's gotten two outs. Granted, faced only two hitters, but pretty high pitch count. Absolutely. And well, that's part of what George's game plan is. Work deep into counts, and it worked for them yesterday. 14 three ball counts. That definitely benefited that Razorback offense. And this is Kylie Halverson really forcing Kerpik to up that pitch count. This will be the 13th pitch of his plate appearance. Folks on this Easter Sunday, in case you went outside and started washing your car when this at bat began for Halverson and have finished doing that and have come back indoors. This put into play, center field, Chambly back in front of the track makes the catch. And it took fifth, continuing it in her sophomore campaign as a catcher as well, and Terry Jennings. Uh, a member of that class that's looking to try to uh, win a national championship in every single one of their years of eligibility. Nobody's uh, ever been able to do that before. I'm high on this Texas team. I think yeah, Texas, they're good, no they're doubt. Really good. They've got five great arms in the circle, tough to prepare for, really good offense and defense. And they don't seem to have any holes. No. Well, a lot like uh, Oklahoma's yeah. been the last three years, right? Yeah. <laughs> Armistead takes all. You'll be in Austin calling that for the Friday, Saturday, Sunday three-game series. Bring your cowboy hat. Yeah, looking forward to it. <laughs> and then you get to stick around Monday and enjoy the total eclipse in That's the right. Austin area on Monday, April 8th. That's right. I've got some family members so hanging out with them. Strikeout for Hannah Kamenzin is her first of the game. One gone in the third. Pitch on the outer half gets Armistead to swing out of the zone, gets her to bite at something. Check swing, appeal. And the Burkhardt says she did not go around. That she being Marissa Miller, the catcher for the dogs, reached on a leadoff walk to start the second. Came around to score. Gotta love that. Amazon's starting to work that outer half of the corner a little bit more. The fastball changeup, trying to mix speeds a little bit. That's how she got Armistead to, to bite at that fastball in the outer half. And tries to blend it with the off speed. On the right side of the infield, Halverson. Two outs. Hey, coming up to looking forward to a fun spring of football. I think they've been eating ice cream the whole game. <laughs> Which is okay. That's all right. Mix in an Easter egg, That's chocolate right. one here and there. That's right. Big B. Two balls, no strikes. Freshman. They're down a sack bunt, an inning ago. Sack bounce. Big reason why 
Georgia was able to put their first run up on the board, especially when they were down to nothing. I'll check that two to one. Hit well, left field. Kramer back off her glove. She bangs up against the fence. Reagan Johnson gathers it and fires it in. Digby has a double. Her seventh two base hit of the year. Uh, Digby gets herself into a 3 1 leveraged count. And what's impressive is that she's able to wait on this pitch and attack it. Off speed pitch. Lower half, and she just goes down and gets it, stays in her legs, barrels that up, and punches that over Johnson's head. Excuse me, that's Kramer in left field, and so hitting that ball hard, getting it off the wall. And you know what that is right there? That is Georgia's first extra base hit mm -hmm. of the series. Yes, it is. You're usually used to saying that in the first or second inning of the first, <laughs> first game. game. Yeah. <laughs> they have six total hits in the game. Which exceeds the five that they had yesterday. Each team had five in yesterday's game. Chambly popped a short first time up. and a strike. Starting to elevate that change up a little bit. That can be dangerous. Very. Seventh three ball count of the game for Hannah Kamen's in. She winds up walking Chambly's. After getting the first two, a Digby double. Now a Chambly walk, and it's going to turn the lineup over back to the top. Fourth walk of the game for Kamenzin, all coming in the last two innings. It takes up high. Davis got one of those walks the last time up in the second. Which, by the way, was her 30th walk of the season. She leads the team in that department. If you're wondering why a catcher is the leadoff batter <laughs> for Georgia, very patient. Wax into the center field. That line drive is snagged by Reagan Johnson. Hit well right on the screws with their head coach, Courtney Diefel. Different feeling game from yesterday. Uh, what have you seen from your offense against Kerpix today? Well, I think that they're making her work. Um, that was the, the approach getting in, is just know what you're hunting and, and make her work. Um, and I think that we're doing that. I think we're, we're swinging a few too many balls, especially deep in counts, but we're going deep in counts, and, and we're making her work, and we look, we look good right now. So there's going to be a lot of punches thrown today, and, and we just got to make sure we keep, we keep throwing them. So. And uh, Coach, what's it like being the pitch caller going up against a team like Georgia? Well, it's really fun, Michelle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it, you know, I, I trust our pitchers a ton. They're a really explosive offense. Um, and it's more so just continuing to work our strengths, um, work our strengths. And they're going to miss hit balls. They're human. Um, and so it's, it's attacking the zone, trusting your stuff, and, and, and dealing our defense. That's what we've done all year. And so we're just staying the course. Because of, that welcome, because of that welcome sarcasm, i got to ask you one more. Make sure that the Diefel residents in Fayetteville today, the Easter Bunny showed up for Suns Trip and Walt. Is that they true? They did. They were good boys. I was oh, going to say it. happy Easter Trip and Walt. I love you guys. Um, thanks for giving me that moment. You so, got it. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> we pick. And Coach Courtney Diefel. She told me that the ages of her sons yesterday, and I can't remember now. I want to say the oldest is about eight. Somewhere in that uh, area. Yep. So happy Easter, fellas, back That's in right. Fayetteville, Vermont. That's exactly right. Okay. Got to have the bunny ears. That's right. So here come the Hogs in the fourth. Three, two dogs. Carter grounds it to Kuma.
One pitch, one out. And for the most part, Coach Stifel's comment right on target. They have made Kerpik's work a lot. And that, I think that's got to be the first one pitch out that she's had today. Yeah, look at this. She's in the top of the fourth inning, and she's approaching 80 pitches. Typically, we like to be in that 12 to 15 pitches an inning-ish ballpark as a pitcher. That's when you know that you're you're handling the ABs and your opponent effectively, but obviously elevated. Arkansas is a, a big reason why. Uh, had a good game plan. They fouled off a ton of pitches. Diving catch, Emily Armstead. <laughs> wow. And you know, I love seeing her react and move as that swing is taking place. She is reading this perfectly. She knows where her pitcher, where per Kerpix is attacking. And you could see that she knew that ball was going to be going in that 5-6 hole. She adjusts properly. She goes back, dives into that 5-6 hole. That is a great, great piece of defense right there. Two outs, Lauren Kamen's in. By the way, she's playing shortstop this year, but last year she was the catcher frequently for her twin sister, Hannah. Both very talented. Out to center field. That is a quick three up, three down in. Right on cue, there's Tony Baldwin, head coach of the Dogs. Hey, uh, we had a nice conversation with you before the game. How have you seen your offense change uh, at all from yesterday to today in their approach? You know, I just think that we're a little bit more relaxed. We're commanding the strike zone a little bit better. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the hardest part of coaching 18 to 22 year olds is just trying to get them to be the best version of themselves each day. And, uh, you know, they feel pretty good today. So I like where we're at. And coach, what do you like about Madison Kerpik's uh, last two innings? She's uh, retired the hogs in order. Well, she was disappointed that she, you know, kind of created the chaos in the second inning there, but uh, she was determined to get back and she pitched really well these last two innings, controlling the strike zone and moving the ball around. Appreciate it. Happy Easter. Thanks, Coach. Happy Easter to you all. Coach Tony Baldwin. Seven in a row retired by Kerpix. That chaos that she created that he is referring to, two hit by pitches. Well, the first three batters in the second, then, as you mentioned, a walk. An RBI fielder's choice got the first Hogs run, then a Kramer RBI single to second. But it's a one-run lead for Georgia as they bat in the home half of the fourth. Ball one low to Sarah Mosley leading off. Yeah, if you look at both these offenses, Mark coming in, right, hitting over 300, they're high-powered, they have home runs, and they can do a lot, right? They're very diverse offenses. So these pitchers have to adjust. They have to be able to you know, zig and zag when the offense is making adjustments, and feels like, you know, second time through the lineup, we're seeing these pitchers be able to potentially, you know, control the zone a little bit better. That's driven well to left field. Kramer feeling for the fence, but has just enough room to make the catch. Mosley already with two hits today, making a bid for 11th home run, but came up a little short. Half. Just so many tools for Jada Kearney. That's exactly how she hit that single in the second inning to drive in a run. And when you have a hitter that stays inside the ball mark, it's, it's hard to hide. It's hard to figure out a way to get them out. Also had a base hit to right last time up, so two for two. You could definitely exploit hitters if they are just totally pull happy. Yes, for sure. Because a lot of times when you're pull happy, you're, you're early, you're getting out in front. So low and slow on the outer half, there's typically susceptible. But when you're good at staying inside the ball, you stay inside on the inside pitch and inside on the outside pitch. Maybe looking to go that way there. Yeah. And that also bodes well for something soft, right? The off-speed pitch, because you're already staying back, allowing the ball to travel deep in order to do that. Fool her on something hard, and you can't fool her on something soft. When I see a, a spray chart like that, I, I, 
where, where the, they, that hitter can go up the middle and go to the opposite field. I'm like, that is a polished hitter. When you see the spray chart and everything's to the pull side, everything's to the pull side, you're like, they can get that hitter out. Absolutely. Getting around the ball. Pulls it to third. It's a smash. It comes up off Gamble and into left field. You know what? She can pull the ball if you're going to leave one in the wheelhouse there, too. Leave it in at 55 miles an hour. So that's an off-speed pitch that we talked that she can hit that off-speed pitch very well. But that one, she gets around because it's just simply showing up a little bit slower than the hard stuff. And you can see off-speed pitch more toward the inner half. That, that ball starts to leak or bleed back into the strike zone. And that's why it just gets hit hard off Hannah Gamble there at third base. Can't really react to that. That is a base hit for Kearney. And if you disagree with that scoring decision, ask Gamble or try to play third base <laughs> when you're drawing in like that. That's a hit. That's yeah. a shot. So Kearney's three for three. Two of those hits have come with two strikes. Kuma, a little easier handle this time for Gamble. Gets the lead runner, Kearney, at second base. I love the way that Hannah Gamble handles that. The ball roped at you. It's easy to shy it to pull up on that. She doesn't. She still goes after Kearney and gets the lead runner. It's a lot of experience there at third base. Two down for Jaden Goodwin. Lines it into the alley and left center field. Kuma rounding third. She will score. RBI double, Jaden Goodwin for two dogs. Jada Goodwin with her third double of the year. We'll talk over and over about this Georgia team, but they're so good at hitting the outside pitch. Goodwin going the opposite way. That's a pitch on the outer lower half, and she's just going to slug that into the left center field, goes all the way to the gap. And Kuma with that speed at first base is easily going to soar, especially with two outs running on the pitch. Ball low to Ellie Armistead. Just made a great defensive play. It's short in the top of the inning, robbing Nia Carter. Move for two with the bat today. Has fly to left and struck out. Four two, two run lead for the dogs. Dogs have scored all four of their runs with two outs. Trying to make it another here, and that may find grass. He will. Armistead just guides it into right center. She winds up trading places with Goodwin. Armistead seventh double, and it's five two. Third extra base hit of the game for Georgia after having none yesterday. You can see the bats are just definitely coming alive. Pitch on the outer half. And again, this Georgia team just looking a lot more comfortable, like Coach Tony Baldwin said. Seventh double of the year. She also picks up the 13th RBI of the year. And all three of those doubles. Georgia have come on over the last seven hitters. That's that third time through the lineup now, having a better idea of what Hannah Camonson is throwing at them. Outside to Marissa Miller. I, I, I really loved the response that Coach Dyfel gave you when you said, how do you like calling pitches against Georgia? <laughs> that was awesome. I love the question and I love the response. <laughs> the sarcasm of her own. Yeah. Oh, it's a lot of fun, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Want to try to get in that brain and it's yeah. difficult, you know, he's trying to continually keep them off balance and you know they're making adjustments and you're trying to get your pitcher to have that confidence and know that you know, try to roll some ground ball and do some pop-ups. Use that defense. Amazon has definitely pitched contact, so it's just a matter of trying to get him to miss hit balls. Oh, 
Full count now on Marissa Miller. He did work a walk in the second and scored. Popped out last time, so 0 for 1 officially. Georgia 6 for 9 with two outs, so 667. And you look at their statistical situational numbers today, and they're just off the charts. 500 with runners on, 444 risk. And that's 667, 6 for 9 with two outs. Impressive. Strikeout ends the inning. Georgia adds two with Kuma. They get to the top of the order and make a pitching change. So third time through the batting order. Now they bring in Shelby Walters. Shelby Walters, senior, transferred over from Duke a couple years ago. Great drop ball pitcher. And we're going to work the edges. And as we mentioned, Arkansas saw her yesterday for a couple innings. Yeah, through three, did not allow a run, just one hit. A walk and a strikeout. And threw 60 pitches. Outside of Reagan Johnson. Reagan singled to begin the game. Picked up an RBI on a fielder's choice in the second. Top of the order here, and the top of the fifth for the Hawks. In the air to left field, Jaden Goodwin drops foul. Foul ball. It was tailing away from her. Made a diving attempt, but came up short, but it was foul. Yeah, she was pulled in. If she'd have been a couple feet further back, she may have had the opportunity to make that catch. But that's... That's tough positioning defensively because you want to be in. You don't want her, Johnson, that is, to dump the ball in front of you. But you know she's aiming to that left side, especially with your shortstop pulled in, the middles, trying to combat the speed of Johnson. One hop to third, Mosley to first. Well, we saw some Walters yesterday, and. What can we expect from Shelby? Yeah, she's tough. She's going to be in the high 60s, low 70s. Drop ball to both sides of the plate. She will change your eye level with the rise ball, but she also can mix speeds effectively. She's really that hard down, so you're going to be looking down. She tries to get you to chase up. But all of these Georgia pitchers have elite off-speed pitches, which to me is the name of the game. If you're going to be a, a top-notch power five pitcher, you've got to be able to mix speeds effectively. I don't care if it's baseball, softball, whatever. If the only thing you throw is velocity, eventually hitters are going to catch up. Yeah, absolutely. Reagan Kramer has an RBI base hit and two trips to the plate. Kramer, a chopper towards the middle. Kuma in, sidearm, fires a strike to first. Strong mark and attacking. Just the height difference of one or two inches is the difference between a, a double or a home run versus a ball that's moving down through the zone, a little bit below the belt for the swing and miss. When you miss to Brie Ellis, where she's looking for a pitch in that tunnel. She does what she did in her first at bat of the series yesterday, hitting one into the construction zone for a home run. 12th home run of the year yesterday. Gets jammed, and it's medium intensity liner out to short and Ellie Armistead. Day of uh, March and Women's History Month. So it's great to see all the support. 
The only downside of playing a basketball game inside, or actually outdoors, at a football stadium like Iowa did, and Caitlin Clark, there was one part in that game where she put up a free throw and the wind blew, and the wind just like blew the ball completely to the left of the. <laughs> but that's a hazard you play when you're playing outdoors right. in a sport that's meant to be played indoors. <laughs> but it was great to have that many fans. Mm -hmm. And and the Nebraska volleyball game, oh, that, that was, I mean, they completely packed the football stadium there in Lincoln. That was awesome. We'll talk about a storied program, Nebraska volleyball. And great to see people coming out in groves to support the women. Continuing to grow. Here's eight, nine, and one batters for Georgia in the fifth. They have a three run lead now. Emily Digby has a sack bunt and a double today. Georgia's had a lot of traffic. Done a good job of striking the ball. Reagan Johnson squeezes it for the first out. Cardinals won in extra innings last night. And so with Georgia striking the ball better in this game, you know, you look at the scorecard and it's, I don't know about yours, but mine's kind of messy. Maybe that's my mine's left, always a mess. My left handedness. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you know, they've rest, they've left eight runners on base in this game. And at times it felt like they were maybe one hit from breaking the game open. Left the bases loaded in the second inning. Picked up a couple runs. You know, they left nine on base yesterday. Mm -hmm. They've left eight on base so far today, including, as you mentioned, leaving the bases loaded in the second, but also left two on in the first, two on in the third. They've left at least one runner on base in every inning. I feel like both these clubs have at times struck the ball well. For instance, Lindy Ray Davis last inning, and she hit that rope out to center field. Just ended up as being the third out of the inning. That's two feet left or right. And it's another couple of runs for Georgia. All good with the catcher, Kennedy Miller. She's ready to receive this. One two pitch out to center field again. Reagan Johnson leaping, bangs up against the wall and hauls it in. There's another well struck ball by the dogs. Winds up as a loud out. Reagan Johnson, one of the best in the business at going back on the ball. Her reacts right off the bat are really the key. And when this ball goes off, she immediately knows she's got a drop set go back. She feels that warning track. She's not deterred. She knows that the Wall is going to be there. It's well padded, and of course, her pitcher Hannah Kamenzin is grateful for that catch. Ooh, right back to the circle, and with the glove, Hannah Kamenzin gets the out at first. Hopefully, she's all right. Head coach Tony Baldwin. He's hiding right now, but he won't be able to hide tomorrow. We'll have him mic'd up. There he is. I love hearing the insight that the coaches give their athletes. It's always good for uh, some comedic relief as well. <laughs> for sure. Well, sometimes, you know, you just got to keep the team loose. And like Coach said in his interview, they're 18 to 22-year-olds. And you know, sometimes I feel like the weight of the world, the gravity, you know, is pressing. And like anything in life when you're relaxed and light that's when you yeah. can't perform at your best yeah, absolutely freshman Kennedy Miller has fly to center and struck out one for three yesterday in the opener so Kerpik's retired the last seven she faced Walters has retired the first three she's faced so that's 10 straight mm -hmm. Georgia pitching. Two and two. Arkansas still challenging the Georgia pitchers on that inside part of the plate, trying to take away that screwball that can come in. Walters is more down. She doesn't really use the screwball a lot. She has thrown the curve. But she will challenge up on that inner half which is important, we talk about it all the time. If you want to be able to you know, work a curve away or something soft away, you have to establish that inside corner. You know, 
some of my favorite quotes on pitching is you know, from Sandy Koufax. And I used to have hanging on my bedroom door, Sandy Koufax, pitching is the art of instilling fear. You don't instill fear on the outer half of the plate. You instill it on the inner half of the plate. That ball's hit well to left field, but it will stay in the yard and right up against the fence. Jaden Goodwin. Kennedy Miller gave that a long ride. And it's the first out of the top of the sixth. Yeah, Kennedy Miller is a uh, growing superstar for Arkansas. Just a freshman, great behind the plate, as well as with the bat. I need more Koufax, though. Yeah, and you've got another one, several of his quotes that you've... Show me a guy yeah. that can't throw on the inside corner, and I'll show you a loser. <laughs> exactly. That, that's the one I was waiting for. Yeah, yeah. It's a, and it is so true. I mean, you have to be able to establish you know, that dominance on the inner half. Otherwise, hitters are just going to start diving into the strike zone. And a gamble is grounded out and flight out. Were you attracted to Koufax as a pitcher also because he was left-handed like yourself? Left-handed, number 32. I yeah. went number 32 for Team go. USA in the Olympics, so yeah. Absolutely. So you took Koufax's number, is what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, just a fun pitcher to watch. You can still see Sandy at Dodger games occasionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important for young pitchers, uh, you know, to study the tactics of the game. Right? Are you pitching or are you throwing? There's a lot of throwers when you're younger. Learning the art of pitching is important. That ends a string of 11 in a row retired for the Razorbacks. <laughs> Alverson shoots it out into shallow right, and that's well tracked by Sidney Kuma. Good job by Kuma. That's not an easy play going back over your shoulder. Coming to then look back into the sun. Yeah, she had an issue about the same time of day yesterday with, with a higher pop up though right into the sun. It landed foul, but had her staring directly into the sun. Strike one to Nia Carter. Back button, ground out for Nia. Nia's an interesting piece for this Razorback team. With her four seasons at Iowa, she was a four-year starter. Had 101 hits last year for Iowa. First team All Big Ten. Liner to short. Armistead with the catch. This textbook. Georgia hitting. Spray chart backs up exactly what you just said. Michelle, imagine that. <laughs> Look at those pitches that she gets on the inner half. She can take them out of the park into that construction zone nowadays. And on the outer half or something low and slow, she'll sit, let it travel, and take it toward the scoreboard. And that's where, as a pitcher, you start to like, how, how, how am I going to get her out? You know, those are the questions you start to ask yourself at times. Which is probably exactly where the hitter wants the pitcher's mindset to be. Absolutely. I want them worrying about how they're going to get me out. $35 million construction zone going on out there. Really beautiful new facilities for Georgia. Yeah, that's uh, everything's supposed to be finished by opening day 2025. Got under that just a bit, but still sent it out pretty far out in the left center field and right near the edge of the warning track. The center fielder, Reagan Johnson, makes the catch. Well, if people are familiar with this stadium here, they recognize there used to be fans in the outfield. And those will be put back in if Georgia is lucky enough to host. Yeah, they had bleachers back there, but they also had basically trees from foul pole to foul pole. Gave it a very unique feel. 
They were uh, spruce trees, by yes. the way. Mm -hmm. So the spruce trees are gone. And it has affected the kind of the wind flow, yeah. so we say. The ball's in the air, depending on the day. Jada Kearney's in some of that direction of the flagpole. She is three for three today. After a two-hit game yesterday. So she's five for seven in the series. Impressive numbers. Well, SEC first teamer last couple of years, first team All-American last year. Just love the way she sets herself up. She's got slightly open stance, so that front foot is going to be slightly open. Gives her herself an opportunity to turn her head, have both eyes really clear, so you can see that left foot, front foot open. Her eyes straight up in the target. Boom. Four for four. And now six for eight in the series. Jada Kearney. I love watching her because you, know, you can look at the technical aspects of her swing and it's just so beautiful. And then tactically, the way that she attacks pitches at her. How about that? Only UGA player with four hits in a game this year. I mean, we talk a lot about her power, but it's also her ability to hit for average four singles. Haley Eaton running at first for Kearney. Kuma is the hitter. Sydney 0 for 2 today with a walk. Bunted foul. Got her while in the batter's box. Kuma making some adjustments. Cannon's in as a lefty, is starting to throw that curveball inside to her. See how far off the plate she is, trying to give herself some room as that curveball comes inside. That one's a little bit low. Two balls and a strike on Kuma. Slowly up the middle, and off the glove of Cammons in. Eaton's going to race for third in with a slide. Well, the error bug hit Arkansas three times yesterday. That's their first error of this game. It was hit slowly, so you're probably not going to get a double play, but you definitely had an out at second base. You can see the way that ball's going right back up the middle. And she's probably thinking a little bit too much, like, hey, maybe I do have the opportunity to get the double play. And before stepping on the bag, the ball rolls out of the glove. Well, it's first and third, still only one out for Jaden Goodwin. Runner takes off for second and stops wanting to get in a rundown, watching the lead runner throw back to third, and Eaton's in safely. So a design play there by Georgia. Akuma just purposely wanting to draw a throw down to second base and see if they can get that runner home from third. We've seen a lot of this year trying to really spin the defense in these first and third situations, and it's important to run the the runners back defensively to run the runners back to the bag. Keep an eye on the advancing runner. And that's going to get over the head of Nia Carter. Eaton is in. Kuma will come in. Goodwin's third hit of the game, her second double. She has driven in four today. It's seven to two. Jada Goodwin has been on target today, just attacking this pitch low in the zone, driving it over Nia Carter's head out in right field. Just bashed. And 
Georgia's off to the races. And head coach Courtney Dyfel has come out. He's going to make a pitching change, lifting Hannah Kamins in. Did a good job with two out. Runners on, runners in scoring position. Nikki McGaffin comes in for her 11th appearance of the season. Opportunity for McGaffin, get some innings in, try to work those spins. The 10th appearance of the year, and that ball's going to find grass in right center field. Goodwin will see a drop, go to third. Armistead has her second hit. Halverson at second base. I think that was her ball. I think she may have misjudged how deep that was going, or maybe she just couldn't see it because of the sun. But that was uh, an interesting play, the way the outfield was deep. People make that play, drops in for a base hit. Here's Marissa Miller. Made her third start and 12th appearance of the season today. She's the starting catcher. So Coach Dyfel going with McGaff, and they've, they've had Heron coming back from injury, Robin Heron. But in a situation where they're down five late in the game, Coach Dyfel deciding, you know what, now's not the right time to bring in Heron. I need to make a pitching change. Let me save Heron for tomorrow. Probably going to have Linestock back as well, ready to go tomorrow for what as of right now, it's looking like a rubber game tomorrow. Rubber game tomorrow, absolutely. And George here, opportunity if they put some more runs up on the board to try to end this early. Yeah, any lead of eight or more after the fifth would end the game. And now, I just saw sunglasses delivered out to Kylie Halverson at second base. That was the reason for the delay. Like, yeah, okay. Hit me that same ball again and I'm going to catch it this That's time. Right. I, Ready to go. Rockets are right on a line, and Carter makes the catch. Tagging Goodwin will score. A sack fly for Miller. The fourth RBI of the year. Miller's previous three RBIs came on a three-run home run she hit this season, but gets number four. It makes it a six run game. Sarah Gordon. Come off the bench. And a bat for Digby. Takes the first pitch strike for Mickey McGaffin. Sarah Gordon in her first year with the Dogs. Transfer from Louisville, spent her freshman year last year with the Cardinals. She's got some power, a couple home runs on the year. And one of those came against Florida State in uh, Clearwater. Top softly, left side. Cammons in the first. That retires the side. Georgia adds three. Last chance, chance for Arkansas down 8-2. First pitch swing and fouled back this way. You were up out of your seat. I was. I react for softballs, you know, so. That gentleman wound up with it. Eight, nine, and one batters for the Hogs. Ryland Hitchcock shoots it in the air to left field. Jaden Goodwin trots in a few steps. 
Well, it's Sunday night at our first ESPN Sunday night baseball matchup of the season. It's tonight, 7 Eastern Cardinals, Dodgers. In the final game of a four game series. Coverage begins with baseball tonight, Sunday night countout at 6 Eastern. You can also find the game on ESPN Deportes as well as ESPN Radio. Cavins in out in front. Nice pitch. Walters continuing to mix speeds. Arkansas has not had a hit since the second inning. Struck some balls well, but you can tell their uh, pitching staff has done a good job. Out to right. A sliding catch by Jada Kearney. Almost on cue saying uh, I've not a hit since the second inning. Almost dropped one in. And into the glove of Kearney, who has four hits today, six in the series already. Yeah, career high, third time she's done that in her career. And oh yeah, she can flash the leather as well. We saw her make a really good catch yesterday, supporting uh, the pitchers, and the pitchers are giving that love back. I love the way this team celebrates their outs and the success of the plays with everyone behind them. Razorbacks down. To their final out. Megan Johnson, one for three with an RBI. Don't forget, we'll have what looks to be a rubber game of this three game series tomorrow night on SEC Network, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Mike Up Monday. And of course, Mike Up Monday, Tony Baldwin, head coach of the Dogs. We're going to have Mike Up. And it will be. Highly entertaining bouncing ball. Kuma backhand. Scores. Out. Game over. Great play. Saw some really good defensive glove work by Georgia in this game. Earlier this inning, Kearney and then Kuma. Reacts, getting in time, and then knowing the speed on the line, Sydney Kuma is going to go get this ball and immediately know the second it's in her glove, she's got to make this really strong throw back to first base. Johnson, very speedy. Great stretch by Emily. The ruling on the Digby field is out at first, first base. base. Arkansas is challenging that ruling. Well, they're challenging the ruling. So hold on just a moment. <laughs> Did I think she's out. You think she's out. I All do. right. It's a great stretch. Yeah. The stretch helps do it right there. Ball and glove. Yeah, I think it's out by hair. So we should get confirmation of the call on the field here shortly. Which gives me a moment to again say Georgia pitching retired 16 of the last 17 Arkansas hitters. This call now was standing. The call on the field is upheld. The runner is out. Yep. The ball game is over. So our crew chief Ronald Burkhart gets to be the guy that says. Listen up, let me tell you about making choices in life symphony. We all have voices. Decisions we make, they shape our fate, but the right ones can lead to a brighter state. From the crossroads of doubt to the highways of hope, we navigate the maze, learning to cope with the weight of responsibility upon our shoulders, choosing wisely as the world grows cold. When decisions, they pay the way to a future bright, where we'll seize the day in the echoes of our choices, we'll find our sound in the melody of life. We're bound Sometimes it's tough To know what's right In the darkness of uncertainty We lose sight But deep within There's a guiding light Leading us through The darkest night With every step we take And every path we choose We're writing our story We can't afford to lose So trust your gut And follow your heart For the right decisions They'll set us apart The right decisions They'll set us apart Right decisions They pave the way 
to a future bright Where we'll seize the day In the echoes of our choices We'll find our sound In the melody of life Where we're bound Oh yeah so as we journey on through life's ups and downs Let's remember the power of the choices we found For in the decision making, we hold the key To unlock the doors to who we're meant to be Yeah, in the rhythm of life, let's dance with grace With every right decision, we'll find our place In the symphony of existence where we belong Guided by our choices, we'll sing our song